Today I will be talking about Betty Sarr's creation titled The Liberation of Aunt Jemima. The Black Arts Movement, 1965 to 1975. Black women were fighting hard just for equal rights. But during this time, there were women like Gwendolyn Brooks, Maya Angelou, and Angela Davis, who were extraordinarily influential during this time. During this time, blacks were treated as less than human, and society as a whole was systematically and brutally trying to dismantle the black culture, with turmoil and racism as the driving force. Three key African American leaders were killed during this movement. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a Baptist minister and activist, was assassinated in Tennessee in 1968. Malcolm X, a Muslim minister and human rights activist, was assassinated in New York in 1965. And Fred Hampton, a civil rights activist and revolutionary chairman of the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party was assassinated in Chicago, 1969. The government used the Vietnam War to kill off black men as well, placing them on the front lines to absorb the blunt of damage while the white men just came in after the carnage had already subsided. Another method of destroying the black culture was the heroin epidemic that flooded the black neighborhoods. And interestingly enough, helped fund the Vietnam War. An inspirational fact, Olive Harvey College, one of our very own city colleges of Chicago, was named after a black Vietnam soldier from Chicago by the name of Milton Lee Olive III that was killed in action by jumping on a grenade and saving the lives of his fellow soldiers. In 1972, Betty Sarr created the liberation of Aunt Jemima as a response to the oppression white America placed on blacks. Betty Sarr, who is still alive today at an impressive age of 91 years old, was born in Los Angeles, California on July 30, 1926. Betty Sarr created this artwork to represent the true form of African-American women and to challenge the stereotype created by society through the use of employing repetition to stretch the theme of a particular symbol, or in other words, mainstream controlling images. Examples of such images include Aunt Jemima Sir. delicious pancakes and even world famous children's cartoons like Tom and Jerry featuring Mama Two Shoes Interestingly, Aunt Jemima was a subsidiary of Quaker Oats who was owned by Henry Cromwell. This particular fact emulates the role of classism because when you see the Quaker guy, who do you think of? White elites with funny hairstyles and fancy clothes. The original Aunt Jemima was Nancy Green, who was born a slave in 1834 and hired to be a spokesperson in 1890. Women in general at this time was not really considered equal, which was a blatant and ignorant act of oppressing women, black women specifically. Black women were also subject to forced sexual activities and even birth babies of their slave masters and made to take care of them, which is also a clear representation of what role women played during this time. 
Also in this picture, if you look to the top left, you will see a caption that says, but we couldn't share a water fountain. Crazy, right? The image of black women went from being mammies to sapphires, which was a label portraying what is considered a sex symbol. Slim and light skinned, with long, straight hair is what was preferred. The ideology of this act allowed the objectification of black women to be justified because they are being classified as others. This binary way of thinking allowed white people to separate themselves from what is being objectified, or otherwise known as the object, aka blacks. This essentially created a psychological effect of low self-esteem and a negative depiction of self-worth amongst black women which also kept them in their place without the obvious disrespect using physical and or verbal abuse. Betty Sarge started creating similar black images as militant and self-righteous, willing to fight and not being submissive. These images portray the mindset of black women taking their place in society and challenging the white man's stereotypical and oppressive outlook on black women. The smile on this artwork does not display passiveness. The smile displays a relief from the disparity of forced subservient behavior and an environment equivalent to hell. I don't think those old school slave owners would have had as much success with these women of the revolution. Strong, independent, and unafraid. three-dimensional sculpture made from found objects. It's essentially a 3D version of a collage. The broom and scarf shows the domesticated side of Mammy, while the rifle, the grenade, and the black fist show power and assertiveness with a smile. The smaller picture is an exact opposite of the larger figurine, depicting a more nourishing woman in front of a picket fence, which typically displays domestication holding a diaper bag with what seems to be a white or a mixed race infant who also displays a smile and a show of enjoyment or acceptance of her position as a servant and caretaker. Also, if you look at the interior of the box, you can see multiple Aunt Jemima faces, seven faces going down and four across, which would be a total of 28. The figurine was intentionally positioned there to go against the big advertising machine and again interfering with the oppressive message being sent through controlling images. My artwork is a collage showing my aunt, the focal point, who was a United States Marine and is now a Chicago police officer on the verge of retiring. Myself, who served in the United States Navy and is now actively serving as a Cook County Sheriff, and my little brother, who is currently serving in the United States Navy. The purpose for creating this collage is to challenge the stereotype of what society depicts as gender-specific roles. When you hear that someone served in the military or the law enforcement officer, the average citizen automatically assumes you are referring to a male. When you specify that it's a woman you are speaking of, then it's a look of surprise, almost as if we are conditioned to oppress women and keep them in specific positions. Well, this shows the influence of a woman on two different men and tells the story of accomplishment in a non-traditional role. My aunt is far from being a feminist. She is just a 